nomenclature of organic compounds is based on a IUPAC set of rules. We will always need to find which is the longest chain of carbons either as an open structure or on a closed ring. When naming an alkane, straight chains will use prefixes indicating the number of carbons. To remember the first four, we will use the trick monkeys eat peanut butter to remember those. From five carbons to ten, we will use the prefixes of polygons. The simplest alkane we can have is with one carbon is the molecule of methane. When we have two carbons, we are increasing the number of hydrogens. We always need to remember that carbons need to have an octet. We have in this example increasing from methane to ethane to propane to butane. In all cases, what we do is to add the A and E ending to convert the prefix to a real name. When we use different functional groups, we still continue using the same prefixes, meth, eth, prop, but, from one carbon to dec, 10 carbons. However, the end of the family name will vary. For example, if we have an alkene, the A and E ending will not be needed, but we will change that family name. Names of alkanes and cycloalkanes are the root names for organic compounds. The number of carbons for cyclic ones is designated by the same prefix as a linear, but preceded by the word cyclo. For example, we have four carbons long, butane. This is still a butane, but now we are going to place the word in front, cyclobutane. We also show the molecule of pentane, one, two, three, four, five carbons, but it's a cyclic one, then we call it cyclobutane. This is the molecule of pentane. If we consider the blue lines to be hydrogens, that will be an expanded formula. We have a condensed formula where the hydrogens are attached to each one of the carbons, and also an a skeletal form or line and angle form that is presenting the same kind of information. There is a second isomer that contains the same number of carbons and hydrogens that is a constitutional or structural isomer of pentane. When we name the second molecule, it will no longer be called a pentane because the longest hydrocarbon chain is only now four carbons. We when naming a branched alkane, we will assign number starting at the end that is closer to the branch. In this case, we have now a butane. We can assign number beginning on this end. This will be carbon number one, two, three, and four. And then the branch that is coming off will have only one carbon. Therefore, this will be to methyl butane. When naming a substance using IUPAC, we will always need to find what is the longest continuous hydrocarbon chain. We will label the hydrocarbon chain always beginning by the end that is closer to a branch. We will use what is called the suffix and that is to indicate what is the family name and the prefix is to indicate what are the branches names as the substituents methyl, ethyl, propyl, isopropyl, butyl, sepbutyl, tertbutyl. We will also have what is called the locant and that is to indicate in what positions we have those substituents. This is a molecule of butane. This is isobutane if we are using the common name but isobutane can be called 2-methyl propane when we look at a hydrocarbon chain three carbons long 
We also observe this is the molecule of butane. Now this butane has one alkyl group substituent. There is going to be called a 2-methyl butane. This is the molecule of hexane. Now this hexane has a substituent in position number 3. So if we start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons long with the methyl group on carbon number 3. Let's name this molecule step by step. We always need to find which is the longest hydrocarbon chain. No matter in which end I begin, I will have that this hydrocarbon is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 long, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 long. However, we must begin by the end that is nearer to the carbon that branches off the longest chain. It doesn't matter because this molecule is symmetric, so I can start in this one or that one. So now we see that the labels are going to be important when assigning what is the prefix of this molecule. The next step is to name the branch. In our case, our branch is only one carbon long, so this is a methyl group, and then we need to put it together. It is a pentane because it's five carbons long. It is a two methyl pentane. It's also important to use a hyphen to separate the name from the locant or the position where the branch is at. We are going to place methyl pentane as a one word. Remember that these carbons have an octet, that means three hydrogens in this one, one hydrogen in this one, and two hydrogens on this one, but to make it simple, we have what is called the skeletal structure showing a two methyl in a five carbons long alkane. When the longest hydrocarbon chain is in a horizontal position, it is easy to find it, but that will not always be the case. In some cases, you will have to twist to find where is the longest hydrocarbon chain. If I go in this direction, I count one, two, three, and I move in this direction, I will go four, five. But if I move here, then I will see that this longest chain is not five carbons long, but it is in fact six carbons long. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Or I can start one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This molecule is six carbons long. Now we need to label the carbons with numbers and assign a name to the branch. It is six carbons long, therefore is a hexane, and the branch is two carbons long, so it's an ethyl group. Since ethyl is on carbon number three, the name of this substance is 3-ethyl hexane. And here we have the skeletal structure for this compound. Let's not get the illusion that this is a butane, four carbons long, with a substituent in position number two, isopropyl. It is not two isopropyl butane. The longest hydrocarbon chain must have as many branches as possible. We number the hydrocarbon by the end that is closer to the branch. When alkyl groups or substituents repeat, we need to group them. In this case, we have a methyl group in carbon number two and a methyl group in carbon number three. Therefore, the name of the substance is a two 3-dimethyl pentane. Let's name this molecule. We observe that we have a lot more branches in this substance. We will need to find what is the longest hydrocarbon chain 
making sure that we have more branches. Let's find the longest chain. If we start right here, it's four. If it's in this direction, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. From here, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it's from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is eight carbons long. So this substance is unobtained with branches. I have two options to assign carbon number one. If I assign carbon number one to this one, my first branch is in carbon number three. If I assign carbon number one to this one, on carbon number three, now I have two substituents. In the name of the substance, each alkyl substituent will carry a number. A good way to know if the label of the hydrocarbon chain is correct is to add the numbers that correspond to this alkyl substituent. In this case, we have a methyl in carbon number three, if this is carbon number one, and methyl is twice on carbon number six. So I'm placing six twice because I have two methyl groups. When I add them up, that is gonna give me a number of 15. However, if I follow a different route in the hydrocarbon chain, this is carbon number one, carbon number eight, I will have two alkyl methyl groups substituents on carbon number three and one methyl on carbon number six. When I add three, three, and six, it gives me a 12. Now, this is smaller number. The name of the substance is 336-trimethyl-octane. And to make it simpler, now we have the skeletal structure. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons long. It has two methyl groups on carbon number three and one on carbon number six. Name of the substance is 336-trimethyl-octane.